Hi everybody, we are here at the 2017 Toledo RC Model Expo. I am here with Orville Wright and we have Greg Gimlick and a friend of yours as well. Uh, I'm here with Wilbur who's enjoying the show. Now they've not had a lot to say so far, but that's okay. I think they've really just been taken aback by all the innovation that they're seeing here at the Toledo show. Greg, I'm ready to see what they've seen. Let's get started. So Greg, 63 years that the Toledo show has been here is what I understand. Well, 63 years, I've only been here for 25 of them, but this is my 25th time at the show. Each year is a little different than the other years. Every year is a great year. You see all my friends, you see people that do what you do, and you learn some things about it each time, too. Well, I'll tell you what, this is my, I guess, third year at the Toledo Show, so I've got a little bit of catching up to do, but it is always a great time. Every year I come, I've really enjoyed this. That's, a, that's the thing. People think it's an airplane show, but it's a, it's a complete hobby show. If it's part of the RC community, it's here, and you can talk to someone who's either new or has been doing it forever, and some of the innovators of the, of the hobby are here. I guess that's why they call it the RC Model Expo. Look, it looks like we've got somebody here that's going to give a little rock crawling a try maybe for the first time. Everything is here. It's just, it's a miracle place. <laughs> it really is. I mean, absolutely everything is represented here. You know, new this year, we'll see it in a little bit. I think they've got a drone cage in the very back of the trade show floor, and they've been doing drone racing over there. First, first year for the drone racing. They're feeling their way through things. They've done a great job presenting it, letting people know what it's about. We see a lot of negativity in the news and things about the drones, and this kind of just knocks out the misperceptions of what's going on. We tend to, to look around the hobby and we see a bunch of old gray beers like myself, and what we don't do sometimes is think about the young guys, what's going to bring them in. And the drone racing has brought these guys who are so good at, at hand-eye coordination. You know, they come from this video game generation, they jump in there and with a little guidance, all of a sudden they are just killer on the course. Absolutely, I'll tell you what, I'd like to go down and take a look at the drone cage right now. Let's do it. So it looks like they have shut down the drone course for us for a few minutes. We'll be able to give people kind of a behind the scenes look here at uh, what these guys are racing around. Yeah, I think they're doing a little charging up and getting ready for some more heat races today, but this is the course. And they've got the lap counters set up behind us. They've got the giant screen TV so people can see the, the, what's going on from the person's view. And then you've got the gates. So these are big gates, so these are for a larger drone that they're not racing in here today. But the smaller gates here are for the little uh, 100 millimeter size drones that, that most of the racing here is restricted to because of the netting and the safety factor. Uh, Safety is paramount. These guys uh, are a drone racing league. They know the rules. They know how to keep people safe and to show it off and bring new people in without anybody risking anything. It's, it's, it's just a great intro. These, they've done a great job. Absolutely. They've got a fantastic space for this. And, you know, all the elevation change is going to make for some really, really interesting yeah. racing. To see them come through that thing chasing each other like that. Here they come around that corner. Hey, you see them come around that corner, my gosh, they're just screaming. Oh, it's, it's just amazing that they hold the corner. And, and you'll see every now and then, one of them will just clip a gate or bounce, and they've got the prop guards on. So it just basically gives a little bobble, and off they go. They don't lose their concentration. They just stay after it. You know, we're just walking up on the scale display. Some of these scale <laughs> aircraft are just incredible. Look at this helicopter. This is Daryl Sprayberry uh, is the one who did this helicopter. It's an OH-58, well, Bell Jet Ranger civilian version. Uh, I flew the military version, so it's near and dear to my heart. And he's won uh, the scale Nats. Uh, I believe this is one of the ones he won the scale Nats with. This is Jim Ryan's OH-6, and he won uh, Second place in the scale event last year, I believe, and I see he's re-entered this year. And they'll do little tweaks, little things to help the scale aspect of it and re-enter it. So you come to a show like this and you see this expert craftsmanship, you see these fantastic pilots like we were just watching, but all of the resources are available. You know, obviously you don't walk into the hobby at that level, but everything is here to help you get started so that you've got something to aspire to. That's exactly right. Everything is here. The resources, even if you're not coming to, to buy a lot of things, 
the resources that are here and you go away knowing where you can order this, who you call to get the, the right information so you don't waste your money. And that's the other part of this is the expertise that's behind the booth as well as out here displaying their wares. And they'll steer you right so you don't spend it wrong. This airplane, he displayed it, it got such attention that the Sikorsky family uh, actually contacted Sal, uh, invited him to their annual family reunion. He met the Sikorskys. Uh, he took him to Expo East. Uh, one of the Sikorskys is 90 years old. He went to Expo East with Sal. This airplane is now headed to the Smithsonian Institute. It's going to be on display there at the Smithsonian. So, uh, here's, a, here's a guy that, that I've known Sal for a while. He's excited. He's as excited today as he was the day he started. And the next thing you know, here's this ordinary modeler who is going to have his airplane in the Smithsonian. It's just phenomenal. These are just regular guys like like oh, you and me. Absolutely. And anybody can, can achieve that level of success. Yep. Uh, Dr. Keith Shaw, uh, this is his eight ball. And He's the one, he was kind of my mentor when I came into the electrics way back you know, around 1990, I guess, somewhere in there. And uh, he does everything as a designer scale. Again, drew his own plans, measured drawings. Keith always picks a project that uh, is not well known. He does unique things. Uh, the spinner, you look at it and think, what a beautiful paint job. The spinner is actually covered with covering. That's ultra coat. You're kidding me. No. He couldn't get the right match for the paint, so he he's a master at covering, obviously. Clearly. And he covered that. The prop is actually covered with Ultra Coat. It's not painted. That's that's all covered with Ultra Coat. Now he won't fly it with that prop on there, but for a scale display. And then right next to it, Mark Rittinger. Uh, he always comes up with a new one for every year, and something that's different and something exciting. Uh, Mark's done a lot of articles for various magazines over the years. So look who we ran into here. It looks like we've got somebody of RC Group's name. Yes, sir. We've been on the floor doing event coverage, talking to everyone, shooting videos, taking photos, and just having a good time. Mostly, uh, I guess the number one or two rules to make sure that we and everyone else is having fun. Absolutely. Well, you know, every time I see somebody around you, looks like they're always having a great time. I, uh, I have to review at the end of the day and think about what I said. But yes, it appears that everyone is laughing and having fun all the time. So I must be doing pretty good. So uh, earlier I did the hot trigger. Uh, I was talking about it. Joe and all, we have a call and we'll call out to like-minded pilots. And if they're around, they will give us a hot trigger. I'm pretty sure it won't work, but we could at least try. I'll do it with you. Hot, hot trigger! Hot trigger. Oh, we got, we got one. <laughs> also, by the way. Last night in the Toledo bar, where a lot of business is done, it was decided we're gonna have Jonal overall day on Thursday. We're gonna try to get everyone to wear overalls on Thursday at Jonal. So look for the story on RC Groups, and uh, and if you're cool, you'll be wearing overalls. Absolutely, well if I end up at Jonal, I'll have to make sure I buy a pair. Okay, I'm gonna hold you to it. If you're not wearing them, I'll carry an extra set. <laughs> that sounds great. Well, we'll see, well, I bet we can hem those probably. I'll be able to fit in. We'll just make you some shorts. <laughs> well, I want to run up here to probably my favorite booth of the whole show, and that would be the uh, AMA membership booth. That sounds like a good place to go. Membership is uh, the most important thing we do almost, is, is bringing people in and educating them. I don't disagree. In fact, that appears to be President Rich Hansen. Morning, Rich. How are you doing? Doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. So how are you enjoying the show? Oh, it's fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. I haven't actually got through all the booze yet, but I intend to today. <laughs> very, very cool. Yeah. Another fun part about coming to the Toledo show, you get to run into people like our favorite Rich. Yeah. We've got uh, Executive Director Dave Matthewson. How are you, sir? Doing great. How about you? Fantastic. And our Executive Vice President, Gary Fitch. Hello, Chris. How are you? 
I am doing great. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to take a load off here for just a minute. And I would love to know uh, your thoughts on the Toledo show this year. Well, uh, the Toledo show is great. It, it's always great to be here. I mean, it's the granddaddy of them all. You know, we it's our opportunity to talk with members from many, many states. And uh, we just enjoy being here. I've been coming to this show for decades, and it's, it's about the people. You know, I, I, I see people here once a year that, that are good friends that uh, I like to catch up with, and, and it's just a great experience, and everybody should experience at least once. I don't disagree. Well, it's really good to see you guys. I'll see you on Monday, sir. You will, with any luck. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you around the show. So we've got Hobby Co. at the Toledo Show. We talked with them a little bit earlier, and oh my God, they have got a ton of really, really cool stuff here. It's a, it's a thrill to come and see the Hobby Co. booth every year. Put your hands on the things you see in the in the tower catalog, you see in the magazine ads, but to, to come here and be able to actually see up close, touch them, see all the, the guys who are developing the products, a lot of times those guys are right here in the booth. So you look at an airplane and there's the guy telling you about it and you find out he's the one who designed it for Hobby Go. And all this stuff, it's not tied down. You can pick up a radio and see how it feels and see how your hands go on. If it doesn't feel right to you, there's another radio and they're here to guide you through. What are your needs? Because lots of times we don't think about, okay, we're doing this now, but what do I need for a radio two years from now when I get into a bigger project? So you're not buying radio after radio. They'll get you in the right path right up front. Never any shortage of, of things to buy at the show either, that's for sure. And always can take advantage of trade show specials. Horizon is on the cutting edge. Uh, electric, as an electrics guy or primary electrics guy, uh, they've just been out there in front for the longest time with it. Uh, it's just, it's like a kid in a candy shop when I get here. I get excited, you know. It really is, like you said, be able to see it in the flesh. I can see this, I can see how big it is, I can touch it, feel it, make my own determinations about, hey, how is this thing made? What problems you know, might I have? And I've got people here that can answer questions about those things. It's just a really, really fantastic opportunity. Yep. And, and it, you can clear up a lot of misperceptions also. You, you'll hear guys say, oh, but it's a foam airplane. When you come in here and you go, oh, look at that airplane. And, and then they go, oh, it's beautiful. The finish is great. It's, it's foam. I didn't know it was foam. So again, you find out that, well, I thought one thing and I was wrong. <laughs> well, Greg, I don't know about you, but there is a ton of show here that's left to see. I am ready to, to take a little break, hit the trade show floor, and see how much of this I can take in before the weekend runs out. Well, it's going to run out. It always runs out too fast. At, at the end of the show, I thought, what happened to my three days? Uh, but. Let's do it. Let's, Let's do it. Let's go find a place to rest our feet for a few minutes. Okay.